And now it's time for two books with ambiguous endings. Very ambiguous. Hello Zany friends and thank you for joining us on our channel today. We're going to talk about two books uh, that we have recently read, kind of more spooky books for the month of October. Uh, and those books are The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay and The House at the Bottom of the Lake by Josh Mallerman. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so a couple things that these books have in common before we really jump into this, uh, the way their titles are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there, yeah. there is that. End of the world, bottom of the lake. Yes, a cabin, a house. Uh, and then there's also the fact that they both are kind of in a weird uh, environment. And the fact that they both end ambiguously but we will talk about that in a minute so let's talk about the one that we have both read mm -hmm. which is cabin at the end of the world we actually read this as part of our book club they were doing like a 48 hour paul tremblay marathon and so we both read this he listened to the audiobook mm -hmm. and i read a physical copy book i actually bought it off of amazon and now i'm really great in it foreshadowing but okay <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about this book. First, let's talk about the title cover draw for this. And we already kind of talked about that. We read it for book clubs. So there wasn't anything about the title or the cover that we were like, hmm, I want to read that yeah. book. Not really. Um, we just heard people talking about it and whatnot, right? Yeah. So what I like, at least it was short. It, it was short. <laughs> the concept I enjoyed, I, but we'll get into some other things about that later. Right. Uh, what we didn't like. Well, the first thing I'm going to say is I felt it like it took a while to get to the plot. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like it was just kind of like, okay, 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 okay. I still don't understand what's happening, but things are happening now. So, yeah. okay. So this is, this has this big, huge, overarching story. There's a plot. There's something that's going on in the universe. And we have no idea what's going on there. That's yeah. not what we're talking about. No, we're talking about this thing over here, about these people killing people. And I guess I should actually tell you what this book is about <laughs> before we really jump into this. Do we know? So, okay. So the book is about this this couple. It's like these two fathers and, and like an eight-year-old girl who have rented a cabin on uh, this like lakefront property. And these four people show up with these really weird homemade gardening tool weapons that are like, okay, we're gonna have something horrible we need to ask you to do but if you do it it will save the world if not there will be an apocalypse and the world will end and of course the people in the cabin start freaking out like what the heck and like try to keep them out of the cabin and then then it's kind of like w w what happens after that like does the world end what happens right yeah um and what is this horrifying thing that they have to ask them to do that is part of it as well? Yeah. So the there is a lot of time that they spend in here just, oh, uh, well, what's going on? Is this even legitimate? Right. We still don't know by the end of the story if it's truly legitimate or if all these people are just psychopaths. So one of the things we always say is, what was it that kept me reading about this book? And what kept me reading was, I just really wanted to know what was actually happening. Yeah. Um, how was this going to end up? Like... Like, seriously, like, there were so many, like, very stressful things about this book that you were just like, I want, I want to see how it ends. Um, and unfortunately, the ending... Does not satisfy. Does not. At all. It was one of those just frustrating things like, okay, yeah, I'm reading it, I'm reading it, and I'm not enjoying this at all. And then, oh dear lord, why can't I have answers? So, if, <laughs> if you like that kind of book that you don't really get the answers, then you probably will like this. The characters were just okay. Like, they were mm -hmm. weird. I, you still didn't really get a big sense of who they were, except for maybe the child of all people. There was one character that I liked, and when they died, I no longer cared. Yeah. So what's really funny is I have a reading journal, if you didn't know, and I like to write notes about the books that I read. Um, and so I follow, you know, the format of how we're talking about the book right now. And um, I didn't write a lot about this one, <laughs> except for at the bottom of the page, I put some uh, really nice fall stickers and I said, at least I have stickers to brighten things up. <laughs> 
at the bottom of the page because wow. All right, let's talk about the next book, The House at the Bottom of the Lake. This is by Josh Mallerman who wrote Bird Box. He wrote another book we're going to be reading for Fortnite Frights, which is called Inspection. Yes, Inspection. Uh, so House at the Bottom of the Lake is literally what it says. It's about these two teenagers. They're 17 years old. They go on a first date in a canoe and they go to this like hidden lake. And then when they're at this hidden lake that everybody knows about, they find that there's a tunnel which takes them to an even more remote hidden lake at which they find a house. This house is completely submerged, but the weird thing about it is that all of the things inside of it act as if there is gravity in the house. They're not floating, okay? So the first time they try to dive down, they are, they, it's just them, right? So they hold their breath, they go down to see what the house is like, and then they decide they're going to need diving gear, scuba gear, and they end up spending more and more time in the house and finding out that there are other weird things that are happening, you know, around to them and to the house. And uh, it is a very short story. Actually, both of these books are pretty short, but this book is short as well. So let's talk about this. This book comes out December 1st of this year. So I did get an advanced copy from NetGalley to review. I had heard other people talking about it because apparently the galleys have been out for like a while, right? And that's, I think, what really drew me to wanting to read it because I knew of other people who were like, this book is spooky and it's weird and, you know, it has an ambiguous ending. And, you know, sometimes ambiguous endings are okay with me. So what I liked about the story was that it is beautifully told. I legitimately wanted to keep going. I wanted to know what was up with this house. How were these people able to, like, preserve stuff inside of the house and not have it, like, decay or anything like that? Did someone live in this house? Who did this house belong to? Etc. Well, my questions don't get answered. You really feel compelled to read this entire story about these kids because you want them to find happiness in some way. And they really feel like this house is where they fall in love, but they also fall in love in the house. So it's kind of like their special place. So that whole thing was really beautiful. Like I said, I didn't like the ambiguous ending. I thought it was like, not great okay the characters themselves were just really deep full of wonder very innocent and i think that's what really was beautiful about the whole book but the ending oh dear lord it's not as bad as cabin at the end of the world but it's still very like what now i started trying to read uh some people's opinions about this book uh, they tried to make comparisons of uh, philosophical things of, that is happening. Sure, if you are totally into finding like more meaning in your books than just like what is being told, read this book because you'll probably really like it. I would say you really would like this book if you like short stories, if you like spooky stories, if you like stories that you really have to be like, mm -hmm, okay, let me think about that and make comparisons. You'll probably like this book for sure. So, I just realized we didn't even give these any stars. So let's start with Kevin at the end of the world. What do you give it? Two. I also give it two. And House at the Bottom of the Lake, I gave it three. I gave it, didn't read it yet. <laughs> Probably won't. So thank you so much for watching our two ambiguous ending reviews. And until next time, stay zany. Bye-bye.